Are Alzheimer's disease and dementia the same thing? Now, this is a question that I'm often asked. Many people use these terms interchangeably, but they are different. I'm Dr. Donovan, a medical doctor working in dementia care services, and I've also cared for both of my own grandmothers who had Alzheimer's disease. By the end of this video, I hope that you're going to feel confident knowing what dementia and Alzheimer's disease are, as well as the differences between them. Now, having this understanding can help you feel more confident when discussing issues with the medical care team, finding the right resources, and importantly, the support that is available for you more effectively, whether it's for yourself or someone who you care about. So let's start with the term dementia. Dementia isn't a single disease. Actually, it's a syndrome or group of symptoms caused by different diseases that affect the brain. Now, these symptoms can include memory loss, especially short-term memory, problems with language or communication, confusion and disorientation, changes in mood, personality or behavior, or even difficulty with everyday tasks like managing finances or preparing meals. It's a long-term condition and progressive, meaning that it gets worse over time. So when someone says they have dementia, it means they have a condition which affects how their brain works, but it doesn't tell us which specific disease is causing it. So think of dementia as an umbrella term, and underneath it, there are many different diseases. Alzheimer's disease is just one of these diseases, albeit the most common one. It's a bit like saying, I have cancer. Cancer is the umbrella term, but there are many different types of cancer, such as breast cancer, bowel cancer, lung cancer, etc. So this brings us on to Alzheimer's disease. Alzheimer's is a specific type of dementia, and it's the leading cause of dementia, responsible for around 60 to 80% of all dementia cases. It causes the brain to change over time, starting with the buildup of two abnormal proteins, amyloid plaques and tau tangles. Now, these proteins interfere with the way brain cells communicate and eventually leads to their death. In Alzheimer's disease, this brain damage typically begins in the hippocampus, the part of the brain that is responsible for memory. And that's why short-term memory loss is often one of the first symptoms of Alzheimer's disease. Now, early symptoms of Alzheimer's disease might include forgetting recent conversations or appointments, misplacing items in unusual places, like putting keys in the fridge, repeating questions within the same conversation, struggling to find the right words or follow a story, or getting lost in familiar places. Now, as the disease progresses, people might also experience difficulty recognizing loved ones, trouble with basic tasks like dressing or eating, increasing disorientation to time or place, as well as personality or mood changes. Now, Alzheimer's disease is just one type of dementia. Other types of dementia include Vascular dementia, which is the second most common type of dementia, often caused by damage to the brain from reduced blood flow, often due to strokes or other conditions that affect blood vessels in the brain. Symptoms can include difficulties with problem solving, planning, and judgment, as well as changes in memory, mood, and movement. Symptoms can be also similar to stroke symptoms like difficulty speaking. Now, another relatively common type of dementia is dementia with Lewy bodies caused by abnormal proteins that are caused Lewy bodies, which can build up in the brain. Now, symptoms of DLB can include visual hallucinations, meaning seeing things that aren't actually there, fluctuations in alertness and attention, and Parkinson's-like symptoms like tremors or stiffness, as well as sleep disturbances. Then there's also frontotemporal dementia caused by damage to the frontal and temporal lobes of the brain. Symptoms can involve personality changes, behavioral problems, language difficulties such as problems finding the right word or not understanding conversations, as well as problems with judgment and decision making. Now, it is also possible to have what is called a mixed dementia, a combination of two or more types of dementia affecting the brain, such as Alzheimer's disease and vascular dementia together. As you can see, there are lots of different types of dementia with Alzheimer's disease just being one of these. So why does this distinction matter? Well, understanding the difference between dementia and Alzheimer's matters for several reasons. Firstly, knowing the specific cause helps to guide which treatments or support might be most effective. Not all dementias are Alzheimer's disease, and there are specific treatments and symptoms that are different between different types of dementia. Some medications are licensed for Alzheimer's disease, but not other types of dementia. Next, it's important from a research perspective. Clinical trials 
often focus on a specific disease, like Alzheimer's, so a clear diagnosis is needed to participate. Finally, it's important for prognosis and planning for the future. Different types of dementia progress in different ways. Understanding the root cause helps families and the person with dementia to plan ahead. Now you might be wondering, how are Alzheimer's and the other dementias diagnosed? Well, if someone is showing signs of memory or cognitive problems, healthcare professionals will usually start by taking a detailed history, asking questions about things like symptoms, how long they've been going on for, and questions about the person's past and their family history. They then may perform cognitive tests. These are tests where they might ask certain questions or get an individual to perform certain tasks to try get a better idea of which specific cognitive problems someone is having. Is it problems with the memory, with language, etc. They'll then want to do a physical exam, checking for things like coordination, walking patterns, and general overall physical health. It's important also to do some blood tests to rule out vitamin deficiencies like B12 or thyroid problems because these issues can sometimes present similar to some symptoms of dementia. And finally, another important tool used to aid diagnosis are brain scans, including MRI or CT scans to assess brain structure, or more specialist scans such as FDG PET scans, which show how the brain is functioning. Now, in some rarer cases, the doctor might want to take a sample of fluid that surrounds the brain and spinal cord for analysis, which is called CSF. Now, based on these results, a clinician can usually determine whether the person has dementia, and often what type. Finally, a question that I'm often asked is, can Alzheimer's or dementia be cured? At the moment, there is currently no cure for Alzheimer's or most types of dementia, but research is continuing and ongoing to try find a cure. But treatments can help manage symptoms and improve quality of life. These can include medications like cholinesterase inhibitors, like donepezil, rivastigmine, and galantamine, memantine for moderate or severe Alzheimer's, as well as importantly, non-drug therapies like cognitive stimulation, occupational therapy, and carer support. Finally, newer disease-modifying drugs like lecanemab are emerging, but availability varies by country, and like all medicines, it does come with potential side effects, so it's always important to discuss every medication in detail with your own care team before starting it. So to sum up, Dementia is a general umbrella term for a set of symptoms that affect brain function. An Alzheimer's disease is a specific condition and the most common cause of dementia at the present time. Knowing the difference can help guide diagnosis, treatment, as well as planning. And remember, if you have dementia or you're caring for someone with dementia, you're not alone. Support is available and I've included links to useful resources in the description box of this video. If you did find this video helpful, please do reach out and leave a message in the comments section. It would be great to hear from you and if you want to share your own experiences, tips or advice to help others in this community, please do so as well. Thanks for watching and why not check out this video next.